Um, for those who are living in African countries, I think probably the best you email me and I can run your search for you. And that is an easy way around for you. Yeah, but I think it needs to be clear on what you're searching for. What is your exact question? And we'll go through a bit in searching, but those who have access to over the Medline, then, you know, uh, this is probably the best way to search. Yeah, Ovid Medline is brilliant because I don't want to remember that there are two main databases. One is a Medline, uh, which is actually PubMed. Um, and then uh, there's Embase. Now, Embase, unfortunately, is Elsevier, which is a private company and therefore is uh, much more difficult. But it contains all the Elsevier journals, etc., and has 80%. So both paper, both databases have 80% of all abstracts. So for meta-analysis to work, for it to be accepted by a journal, you need to search two different separate databases. The problem is that if you try to do that, what would automatically happen is that you would get hundreds of abstracts that are the same in from each database. And then you can do it in EndNote, but it's painful. You have to look at each abstract and then eliminate it. It's a du duplication. You have to remove the duplicates. So the easiest way is Ovid Medline. Ovid Medline allows you to search two databases at the same time. So you can, for example, click on Embase and you can click on Medline, yeah? And when you click both, you can search both. Simple, yeah? Not complicated, yes, guys? Um, so that way uh, you can make your own life easier. And then you'll, there's a function called reduplicate, it will remove all the duplicates for you. Now, First of all, I know some of you don't have access to Ovid Medline, but unfortunately, this is probably is the best. This is one um, thing that I've not been able to find a, um, a workaround. So for most of you guys, this is the reason why we do R is that you know R is free and it's cheap and you know it's basically quite easy to use. Um, but mainly you can have pay for it, so that you know removes one huge barrier uh, for. Uh, medical student. And uh, at this point, let me pick on uh, Omnia. Uh, Omnia, I think you're new. Uh, you, have you seen some of the previous YouTube? Stuff? Uh, uh, sorry? I said, have you seen some of the previous YouTube stuff? Uh, yes, I have. What did, what did you think so far? Uh, I thought I would like my mind was very confused. So I couldn't understand like because it's a video. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I can't comment on that. So we use a concept called well the reverse meta analysis, where you do the forest plot first, then you work your way backwards all the way until you, you the search is actually sort of it comes in the middle. Yes. Uh, so, uh, but today is the searching is still comparatively easy to understand. So for all to get into Ovid Medline, uh, for people in the UK, uh, you would use Open Athens. Uh, in other countries, you probably have to go through your library. A lot of libraries can do search, and in countries where it's more difficult, you can. There are um, university libraries that still have access. Yeah, they still yes. have access to all of this, um, to uh, Ovid uh, Medline. Um, otherwise, you can ask somebody else to do it for you. Um, but the, the, the thing is, this is really is the only way you can do a PubMed search, but it's a bit difficult. Embase, again, requires a subscription. So you, you, yes. even if you, you did Medline, you would still uh, run to This is a big problem um, with this sort of stuff that there's discrimination against anybody who is not from a rich country, basically, in research. Huge discrimination. But it suits them because, obviously, then they control all the journals and they can make money of them. Anyway, that's a mm -hmm. different matter. So resource selection. So first of all is you, you can select which ones you want to search and usually we have search Embase and uh, or Medline, yeah? I would tick those two. If you want to change, you can basically go to this and change whatever you uh, are searching. And for example, now it's set on keyword, but it can be author, title, journal, but in reality, most of the time we will do keyword. Your searches appear here, yeah, in, in, in here, uh, the search history goes there and you can put your search term can go in there and actually allows you quickly to change the publication years, allows you to whether you're searching for abstracts, full text, structured abstracts, review articles, English language, humans, etc. There are, what do these uh, mean? Basic search is a simple search, yeah. Uh, you can find citations if you look at a specific reference. Search tools are for specific search intent. We'll go into that in a minute. 
and search fields is keywords on information on how to uh, use these subject headings. But multiple search, which is my favorite, uh, is uh, combined search terms. But you, you, you can do advanced search rather than um, multiple search. What is a subject heading? I personally don't really like subject headings. I know that a lot of people are worked up, by, oh my God, subject headings are very, very important. And subject heading means that somebody's actually structured the whole of um, the internet, yeah? And, and to be honest, I think this is a relic of the past. A bit like when you used to open up Yahoo uh, many years ago, I don't know if anybody remembers Yahoo, but Yahoo used to organize everything under headings, all the websites in the world organized under headings, and nobody even bothers to do that anymore. And I think with the research, it no longer makes sense. But if you wanted to do it, you can, and you can, uh, you can, what you can do is you can change the map term to subject heading. You tick on this box, map term to subject heading, and then you can say rehabilitation, and then it finds the subject heading. And then you can use two, two ways. You can explode or you can focus. Yeah, explode or focus. Um, and then uh, you, uh, I mean, for example, let's say rehabilitation, yeah? And then I can either explode or focus it. So explode, including the subject heading, as well as all the more specific headings under rehabilitation activities, daily living, uh, animal assisted therapy, art therapy, uh, you know, whatever, cardiac rehab, all of those. And those are all, all this increases the number of results, which includes the reference related to the relevant subtopics. Focus retrieves references that have this subject heading as their main topic. This means that there are fewer references. So you can either explode, because, oh, I want everything, or you can just focus. No, no, I just want subject headings is their main topic, or both. But you can also do this. Uh, you can do both explode and focus. But that is, they say, oh, bring me everything underneath this, but only if it's the main topic. Yeah. So you both explode and focus. So you basically are saying, bring everything in, but then uh, I only want the ones that have this as a main heading. Interesting. I do not use this at all. Yeah, I do not use explode focus mesh terms at all. I've gone away from that. I think this is a relic of the past. Yeah, but you can if you want to do it. And I think in certain topics it might be helpful. I haven't found those topics yet, but I don't use this. Yeah, I keep it simple. Yeah, with everything, as you've realized with my uh, thing with meta analysis, everything that's not useful, I throw it in the bin yeah? <laughs> because I don't want to waste. But let's give you an example. You do so, you did that. And then you do uh, this, you've got this tree for uh, rehabilitation. You say continue. And then you've done, so this is now explode rehabilitation and you've got 163,083 abstracts. <laughs> so that's not a great way to do a search. No, 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 no. Doing a search, do keywords. Keyword, what is a keyword? Keyword is uh, what the topic that you're searching for example, tuberculosis or rehabilitation or whatever. And then what you can do is you can type your search into the search box. So let's this advanced search, by the way, this is uh, the advanced search setting. So you can do rehabilitation, apostrophe means because you, the rehabilitation can be spelled a number of ways. So we do rehabilitation, apostrophe, or physiotherapy, apostrophe, or physical therapy, apostrophe, or exercise therapy. So we've got all of them together. But how do you search? So dot MP means we'll search the words, whether they appear in the title, abstract, subject heading, author, every. So you search in the whole thing, yeah? Whereas point TW means in the title of abstract only. So Cochrane really likes TW. I think TW is actually not bad because it searches only in the title in the abstract. It doesn't search in the subject heading, in the uh, keywords, etc., It just says in title and so sometimes that's actually quite useful. Um, and point TI is very limited because it says only where the words in the title. For me, the best one is TW. This is Gold Redux, yeah? MP is too much. TW is uh, title or abstract and TI is only in the title. You don't have to use this. I actually don't use this. Uh, most of the time. I actually don't add this. I, I do, do this, apostrophe, but I don't even bother with MP or TW and TI. Yeah, I don't even bother with it. So you can simplify it in your brain. Yeah. So search fields, keyword, yeah. 
Uh, and then, uh, so rehabilitation.ti means only in the title. How many came up? Oh, 52,696, still quite a lot, yeah? Still quite an enormous number of results, yeah? So you have to remember rehabilitation didn't bring you that much, but when you put apostrophe.ti, it brought up an enormous number, yeah? And that's something you remember. So with this, and then you remember that the way you can do is you click on the right, uh, expand and then expand this. Yeah. Now, does anybody, uh, let me just see if it's actually possible to do this exercise as a, um, the, let me just ask if anybody's got Ovid Medline. Omnia, Harjit, Celestine, have you got Ovid Medline at all? Uh, I uh, do. Sorry? Uh, sorry, what was your question again? You guys have Ovid Medline? Uh, uh, no, I couldn't log in. Ziana, Kiara. Oh, you, you have, okay, might as well give it a go. Oh, uh, George, uh, Clement, Najib, do you guys have Ovid Medline? Rami, Wehan, no? Yes, no? Okay. Not sure, let's check. Yeah, yeah. no, it's not available here. Okay, so you have to, oh, let's ask some. Um, Adrija, Daniel, Ali Khalil, Monica, do you guys have access to Ovid Medline? No? It's not available. Uh, no, I don't think so. I have that. I don't think so. I, I think one possibility might be you do the more painful method, which is to search through Medline and then search on Embase. It might be possible to get access and then combine them together, which you can do through EndNote. <laughs> what? It's painful. Yeah, guys, it's, 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 it's uh, actually quite painful um, to do that. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I managed to get into uh, Medline. Okay, Medline. Uh, okay, I mean, all the database, the search, I will go through it, but the searches are quite similar. Yeah, the process is quite similar. So the, let me just go back a little bit. So first of all, you can use subject headings. Don't do it. Yeah, subject headings, then you can focus, which means that, uh, and explode. Explode means that you all the subheadings are included as well, uh, not just the main heading and uh, focus only basically uh, if it's mentioned in the title. Um, but I wouldn't use that. Then you can use with keywords. So you can do MP where it appears and everywhere. That's sort of a maximum search. When TW title abstract only which Cochrane loves and dot TI but, uh, in the title. But you don't have to, I don't even use this. Yeah, I don't use this. I don't need to, yeah. Uh, so then how do you do it? So this is where we chain the search together. This is a chaining of the search. And the two important operators, this is what you do need to know. And, or, yeah? So you say, um, we combine subject headings, synonyms, alternate spellings to the same concept with or to find references where these related terms are present. So that means that I want every paper which, uh, so explode rehabilitation was the, um, so, you know, the mesh term. So every paper with, in under rehabilitation, then I want uh, every paper with rehabilitation in the title. I want every paper with physiotherapy, everything. So this could, this sort of or could lead to hundreds of thousands of papers, yeah? So one or two, so this, one or two or three. Yeah, so this, this what you did is you clicked on all three, one, two, three, and then you said or, and then a new line appears, one or two or three. And then how many have you got? So with the rehab explosion, we had 163,000. With this one rehab uh, title, 50,665. Uh, 50, then physiotherapy, 5,000. Oh my God, you got 194,804 abstracts to look at, which will take you a lifetime. So what are you gonna do? So then you take the search further. Now most topics, most topics is uh, are very specific. So you don't want to just know about rehabilitation. You want to know rehabilitation that back pain. So then I say explode back pain, and then back pain. Dot ti in the title. Yeah. So then we combine five or six. Yeah. Then not only that, I want to return to work. I want to return papers with return to work, return to work, or fit 
for work. Yeah, one of the two. So I say, uh, so fit, we put a apostrophe because it could be fitness for work. Dot TW. Yeah, dot TW, which was, if you guys remember correctly, uh, title or abstract, which is the middle one, which is the one Cochrane prefers. So then we've got rehab, rehab, physiotherapy, all of these papers. Then we say back pain, back, back, explore back pain, back pain dot TI. So why searches? I don't do the explode, yeah? Get rid of the explode. This is like, if you can see, it's messy. It leads to lots and lots of abstracts, which are not useful. I, I don't like that explode, yeah? I personally don't use it. But you say back pain, yeah? And then uh, five or six. So 194,000 abstracts for rehab or physiotherapy, 25,000 for back pain, and then eight or nine is, eight is return to work and nine is, and then, so we've combined all of these, or, or, or these three, or these two, or these two, or, yeah? And then what I do is I click on these three and say, oh, give me the abstracts, with these, all of these together, yeah? I want uh, one which has a rehab and a back pain and a return to work together. And that, my, voila, you only got 201 abstract, you're saved, yeah? You're absolutely saved. 201, yeah? So, Let's go around the room and see if everybody understood this. And if you have any questions. Omnia, Harjit, Celestine, any questions about this? Uh, no, I don't have any questions. Zena? Uh, 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 this is yeah. Ovid, right? Ovid. I should type Ovid on uh, Safari or what should I type? Because I typed Medline, uh, Medline and uh, something irrelevant came up. No, Ovid, Medline. Oh, oh, with my line. Okay, thank you. I mean, most of these search terms do work in the other term uh, databases. Uh, there's some slight differences. We'll go over them in a, in a little while, but these are generally how most of the databases work, okay? Zena, Kiara, Odette, George, any questions so far? No, all okay. good. Okay, uh, Najib, Rami, uh, Wehan, Bunayat, Rita, any questions so far? All good. Gwihan, I promise I've taught you. Come on. Uh, what do you think? Any ideas? How we could um, yeah, um, I'm good so far. It's pretty much the stuff that I've like done before. So. Very good. Oh, you want me to make it harder. That's fine. Oh, no, no, no. Please don't. <laughs> I'll, I'll show you guys a, a, a Cochrane search in a minute, yeah? How they do it. And it's very interesting. So Rita, uh, Crystal, Rayan, any questions so far? Anshika, any questions? I don't have access to cover uh, to, to yeah, I, I have to do Embase and Medline separately. Medline, you can still do a full search. Uh, it's just not as good, uh, but yeah, you can still do a full search in Medline. Um, but it's always useful to do a search in Embase as well. You need access to that, basically. Uh, Samuchku, uh, Alexandra, Friendly Mofo, any questions? Aki, Monica, Ali Khalil, Adrija, any questions? Not for me. Clement, Najwa, Daniad. Yeah, so can we use use the same principles uh, on PubMed as well? Pub, so, so for, to PubMed is just a public facing bit, the database is Medline. Oh, okay, sure. All right. So but we can right. do the same uh, Boolean operators over there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all the same. All okay. Right. All the same. All right. So let me just explain the search to you again. We, the concept is that these Venn diagrams, if you remember Venn diagrams, so you say, I have B, I have A. Where do they meet up? Yeah. So let's say in this case, I do this um, explode. So rehab rehab.ti and physiotherapy.ti, which TI is title, yeah? And then I, oh, I decided to combine this one, two, or three. I click, click, click on one, click on two, click on three, and then say, oh, 
And then I do it again, back pain, back pain, and then or. And then return to work, return to fitness for work, or. And then I do four, seven, 10, then and. And I end up, oh my God, 201 abstracts, which is great. Search results. Now, search results, when they come up, you need to change this 20 per page to 100 per page, and that's how you export it. Yeah, this is how they come up. You can use various options for sorting your thingies out. You, uh, in this case, there's too many, too many results to sort. <laughs> but you can do by year, past three years, past five years. You can do by subject, author, journal, publication type. So you can sort them if you want, if you want it, yeah? Which can sometimes be useful. I tend not to use this. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't use any of these. And the, apart from that, because I actually put the search timings that I don't want to do this. Uh, limits. What are limits? Limits are here. English language humans are common ones. Humans is probably the best one for a, a medical one. But there's lots of other limits you can do. You can do uh, randomized control trial filters and things like that. But um, you can do English language, which I've done here. So you put in, so basically adds on another line where you've you've added a filter on. So English language, for example. You can export them. So you can export the references uh, by export. And what you need to do is understand this, this is where it becomes a bit difficult, is that you increase this to 100 per page, and then you export your search. And then the problem is that when you when you um, export it, then, then you, uh, you should best to export. I usually export as an RIS file because I can um, send it to Rayan where it's more for my screening will be. And then from in Rayan, then I, I have to take up these RIS files. Each of them contains 100 abstracts. Now, if you don't do ne they don't if you don't do next or change the page, if it, it will start keep exporting the same page. So you have to change either the page or do next to change the page. Yeah, it's exporting the page, not anything. You can save your search if you have an account, which is a good idea. Otherwise, take a picture of your search. Yeah. So this was let's say so we did those. We did that search. And we under 201 by decided, okay, let's limit to English language. Also, Cochran does recommend this. This is a bad idea. This creates research bias. And then they wants to limit the year to 2000. You can do that as well. And those were, as you saw, the limits that we clicked here, English language or humans or time, which is publication. But uh, So if you have a save search, if you have a file, then you can go to uh, view saved, and then uh, you can click on your permanent search and you can research. Truncation. Now truncation we just talked about is used by many, many databases. All databases on the Ovid platform, Medline, Embase, PsycInfo, on their AppScope, Eric, Sinhal, NHS, Hashdash, all use the apostrophe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. all use the apostrophe as a uh, truncation command. Um, and it search instructs the database that when you are searching for a free text word keyword, it should search for the root of the word you've typed in and then retrieve any alternative endings. Yeah, it's excellent for searching for plurals without having to type out the singular and the plural, but also find alternative endings. Now, this you have to keep in mind that if you make the word too short, mm -hmm. then the problem with that becomes is that it will um, find uh, words which are not relevant. So, for example. A word dentist apostrophe would receive any article, which is the word dentist, dentist, or dentistry in the title. Therapy, uh, thera uh, apostrophe, any article, therapies, or ther therapy, ther uh, sorry, therapy or therapies, but therapeutic as well. Also therapists as well, but that might not be relevant. So you just have to keep in mind, when you use truncation, you can get yourself in trouble. Yeah? So dentist apostrophe is dentist, dentist, dentistry. Therapy is therapy, so that's all fine. The therapy, therapies, therapeutic, but therapists you didn't want, and therapists you didn't want, so that becomes a little bit more uh, difficult. Yeah. So this dollar sign can also be used in Ovid as a truncation database, but not on the other. So I wouldn't recommend this um, dollar sign. Yeah. I'm trying to keep that. So. Um, in so so apostrophe uh, can represent any group of characters no character can also be used within a word yeah 
So S E S uh, apostrophe food, yeah, matches seafood and soy food. So you can use it within a word as well. Yeah, keep that in mind. You can use it within a word, which is, can be sometimes be quite useful. Um, so in those databases which use subjects headings, it's recommended you search initially with your term in full without using truncation, because if you use truncation, so this is why I, I do not like subject headings, because subject headings, you cannot use truncation, you, you end up getting all sorts of irrelevant stuff. This as, as I think um, uh, subject headings and mesh words and all of this is, is a dinosaur and belongs in the past. Yeah, but truncation is useful. Truncation can be useful. Otherwise, you have to uh, type up 15 billion terms, you know, like, uh, so you, uh, like, you know, dentist, dentists, dentistry, you know, it just becomes too much. Yeah. Floating subheadings. Now, floating subheadings are the, um, um, is, 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 is a, a particular aspect of a subject heading. Yeah, in Medline, Embase, and Sinal. So um, this, is, and what you do is, um, for example, is med, in Medline, you can do thromboembolism prevention and control. So the two letter subheading abbreviation is PC. So this is one of the subheadings, prevention and control. Um, so this, this um, uh, you, you can find any article which has been tagged with a specific subheading. Don't use it. This is useless again. I mean, I, I know information specialists love it, but I think this is completely useless, utterly, utterly useless, but can be used for one type of search, one very specific type of search, which it can be helpful. And that is adverse events or complications or drug effects, yeah? So what you can do is that you could actually uh, do uh, safety toxicity, um, you can, you can uh, look into. And this is, um, uh, so you, you can use this um, uh, in, in uh, these types of uh, searches. So what you could do is that you could do uh, AE, which is adverse effects or complications or drug effects dot floating search. Yeah. So that they've actually brought together all these different safe side effects or treatment or a tolerability. I'll go into what the adjacent means as well, et cetera, et cetera. So you're in the title um, and uh, what you're doing is you're bringing them all together. So this is a search to bring together every single adverse effect possible. And he's using every single term, adverse effects, complications, drug effects, undesirable, tolerability, tolerance, toxicity, toxic, harm, harmful benefit, complications, everything is being brought together in a search try and find every single side effect possible. And this is because this is done on a very specific drug, which is methylphetamine. Yeah. So this is, but proximity searching is interesting. This is, um, can sometimes be used. I don't use this that way or very often proximity searching, but proximity searching is that to uh, so adjacent means the word is adjacent. So two terms are next to each other in the specified order. So adjacent one means the two terms are next to each other in any order. Adjacent two are the terms in any order, one word separating them. ADG three means the terms are any order with two or, or fewer words with them. Yeah. So for example, middle ear infection, infected middle ear, infection of the middle ear, middle ear derived infections. So N is the number of words that could appear between. So for example, middle ear uh, uh, is, is basically, uh, um, that is N3, so you know, three words. And so that is middle ear, uh, the maximum number of words is uh, one, two um, words can appear. I mean, some of them is a bit more. So, but here what we've done is we've done adjacent four, up to four words apart, yeah? Within three words or four, which basically um, takes all of these in. So adjacent, it's again, these are obscure type of searches. You don't need to know this too much. You don't need to use this uh, too much. This can, so this is where some of the database are different. So Scopus, Web of Science, and now they're all a little bit different. But for most of them, adjacent will work, yeah? For the vast majority of databases, using adjacent will work. I don't use it as much uh, because th this this is uh, most most uh, most people have learned um, 
to be able to bring it together in two terms, yeah. Um, because the problem is you could do this search by just doing infection and middle ear as well, you know, as separate search terms. You don't have to do this adjacent business. But, you know, that's one way of doing it. I don't do it that way. I keep my searches very, very simple and clear to understand so somebody in the future could do it. So I do not use floating subheadings, uh, but you could technically do it if you were doing a, a, you know, a one drug and you were doing for lots and lots of side effects. Proximity searching, I don't use that much as well, as I told you. I just use the apostrophe. So just keep life very, very, very simple. Yeah? Very, very simple. Okay. Um, let's go around the room to see if anybody has any questions. Celestin, Chiara, George, Najib, any questions? No, no questions. My God, she has done everything already. Rami, Vihan, Bunayat, Rita, any questions? No? Uh, Vihan, what did you think? What's your experience with searching? Um, yeah, so this is like, a, not like, I've not learned this before, so yeah. I know, this is a bit too complicated. Rita, uh, Christelle, Anshika, Dalida, any questions? Anything you want to clarify? I think one important thing is that that search that I told you, the beginning, the, the, the simple one, where you basically, uh, those terms that you bring together, let me go back to that one. This is the way you should do it, yeah? This is the, keep it very, very simple. Don't Complicate your search. Yeah, this keep it this way. Yeah, this combined with this combined with this. So, for example, tuberculosis, drugs. You know, TB drugs. Things like that. For example, you know, just keep don't 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 complicate your own life. Vishiva, Daniel, Clement, Arjit, any questions? For me, Clement, um, I think I'm just following. Uh, you know, I don't have access to. COVID med, uh, med line for now. I have, although the search terms will work on every database, okay? Uh, Ayoji, Najwa, Ajarita, Ali Khalil, Monica, Alexandra, Sumuchku, Dalida, and Shika. No questions? Guys, you guys know everything already. There's no need. Okay. Proximity searching we talked about, where you could use adjacent. Now, So, Cochrane, this is what you uh, you will often enough see in Cochrane. And Cochrane gives, so Cochrane is supposed to be the gold standard. And they give these complicated search strategies. So this is, now, but you can understand this now because I'm trying to teach you the languages as, as we're going along. Explode asthma, yeah? Then asthma, and you know, this, this, you remember the wild card, yeah? It could be apostrophe, it could be a dollar sign, but prefer, in Ovid, you can use a, a dollar sign. Or wheeze, because it could be wheezing, asthmatic, asthma, yeah? Dot TPW, which is in the title. So asthma or wheeze, yeah? One or two. Then cellular phone, MP3 player, computers, handheld, uh, you know, cell or mobile. And so they, what they've done is, they, you've got to use the wild card, which is supposed to be, they've also used adjacent, adjacent to phone, yeah? So dot TW in the title. So you've got all these compute, types of computers, smartphones, all of this. So that becomes another group. Oh. And then uh, PDA, which is basically, again, search in the title, abstracts, all of these. And then what you would do is that you would combine them. Yeah, you would say, Oh, well, you've done all these ors and then you do and so one or two and five six seven eight nine ten yeah so that would make it very very simple now the thing you have to remember that ovid i don't usually put anything yeah i keep it simple and so what it does for me is it does an mp search which is basically a very thorough search yeah mp search yeah there are some other wild cards available you can use check on the uh, help pages, but in essence, you can a, uh, use this grid thingy 
I forget what it's called, to replace exactly one character. Uh, comma at the inside or end of word to replace zero on one character. Uh, and then the dollar sign uh, as an alter to apostrophe. You don't need to do this. Keep it simple. Just use the apostrophe. Yeah, guys, just use the apostrophe. Do not complicate it. And now we discuss and we discuss or. But then there's another one, which is not. Now, I don't tend to use not because I use the filters. So I don't have to use not because I already uh, animal, uh, you know, no animals. So Cochrane uses this a lot. So the not command allows you to search for terms that appear in the search results and then eliminate not. Yeah. So uh, we'll, and eliminate them. So you have said combined search. So we say that explode animals, not humans. Yeah. And then what I do is that I say ex remove all of the ones with the animals and not humans. So not one, not two. Yeah. One, not two. So that allows you to uh, filter out animal studies, animal studies. This is part of their RCT filter that they use. So, uh, for example, you can also say, uh, explored pregnancy or explored uh, animals, not humans. And then you say one, not two. Yeah? So you basically not to exclude. So use not with care. As used incorrectly, may exclude results you're interested in. So you were interested in retrieving research antidepressants and in excluded term CBT uh, or cognitive behavioral therapy using not, you would exclude any results which directly compared the two methods. Yeah. So if you do not uh, wish to exclude specific keywords or subject headings and consider adapting the Cochrane method for excluding animal only studies using the double not. Yeah using the double, I'll, I'll go to this in a minute. Um, phrase searching, yeah? Phrase searching means that if you put um, commas around it, commas around it, then uh, you, um, uh, you basically just find that those keywords are searched as a phrase, but I, I don't like it. Phrase searching is 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 basically fairly restrictive. Yeah, Fair, it just finds those exact words. Um, so uh, what they're saying is it's probably better to search physical or therapy. Yeah, because of, you won't get that much um, with specific phrase searching. Okay, I mean it could be that that is used in that very specific way and nothing else. But you're better off splitting. Yeah, you're splitting it. Um, I think, yeah, I'll stop there. Now, what I wanted to show you guys, uh, let me show you guys a, uh, a search from a Cochrane. From a Cochrane one. And then you guys will be able to understand this a bit better. Uh, let me go back to the thingy. And then new share. Okay. That, that, so this is a Cochrane protocol. Oh my God, I'm in there somewhere. <laughs> it's me there as well. I actually wrote this all, most of this. Depressingly enough. Um, and then appendix. And if you go to the appendix, aha, what is this? My God, it's a Cochrane search strategy. So mitral valve insufficiency. Mitral adjacent within two words of regurgitation. Dot TW, title search. So basically, um, a TW means that it's in the title or in the abstract. One or two. So what we're looking for in this case, we're looking for articles which are basically uh, mitral valve, either surgery or tabby. Uh, and then, uh, because the, the, this is basically is a meta-analysis both on percutaneous mitral valve and on surgical mitral valve. It's actually both. Okay. So we say mitral valve insufficiency, then mitral 
adjacent two words to regurgitation, then in fact one or two, then then is a bit more interesting. Surgery uh, apostrophe or operation or repair apostrophe or replacement apostrophe or intervention apostrophe or transcatheter apostrophe or transcatheter apostrophe or percutaneous apostrophe adjacent to valve. So not just surgery or operation, but adjacent up to three words to valve. And then the title or abstract, then three or four. Then this is the randomized control filter that Cochrane uses. And what it does is it takes randomized control trial.pt, randomized control trial, uh, clinical trial.pt, randomized.ab, placebo.ab. Basically, what it is, you don't need to know what all these are, but in essence, what it does is it tries to file all these randomized control trials using this filter by the randomized placebo, drug therapy, randomly, trial groups. Oh, yeah. And this is becomes a separate group. So we've got mitral valve on one end, then surgery uh, on the, uh, which is on a mitral valve, uh, or sorry, on a valve on the other end. And then we've got randomized control trials on the third end. Yeah. And we say six or seven or eight or nine or 10 or 11 or 12 or 13. So we basically has combined six to 13, which is the randomized control trial filter. Then we said, uh, 14, so we, we basically said explored animals, not humans, yeah. And then 14, not 15. What I've done, we've done is we've taken all randomized control trials. We've, we've basically taken out uh, all the animal ones. So we've taken, so first of all, we said all the randomized control trials, and then we said, take out all the non-human trials. And then we said, combine five and 16B. So in essence, this becomes a three-way thing. Mitral valve, mitral valve operation, and then the randomized control trial filter with no, um, uh, with only human trials. So, so these three, where they meet in the middle. Yeah, all of these three where they meet in the middle. Now, this is a lot to take in, yeah? So I'm just gonna go around the room again and see if you guys understand this uh, clearly. What I'll do is let me do a new share. Stop sharing this. And share screen. All right, you guys can see this. All right, so. Please look at this carefully, and if there are any questions, you need to ask me now, yeah? Celestin, Kiara, George, Najib, any questions about this? Because you guys need to be able to understand this. No? George, no questions? No questions. <laughs> you understand everything. I'll go through it again, yeah? One more time. Mitral valve insufficiency. That's one keyword. Mitral, valve, mitral adjacent within two words of regurgitation. TW is title and abstract. One or two, that's one. Yeah, one part of our Venn diagram, that one circle. Then surgery or operation or repair along with these apostrophes, intervention or transcatheter or percutaneous, adjacent within three words of a valve. Again, we try to word of abstract three and four. So you have to have both together, three and four. It has to be both mitral valve and um, surgery. Yeah. Then randomized control trial filter. Now they use this on everything, and you can just cut and paste it. You don't even need to understand this. You just need to understand that this filter will bring up every randomized control trial in existence. And then what you can do is you can explode animals, and then you can. Um, you can you can basically explode. So they basically they do this double thing. So what they've done is exploded animals and then eliminated the humans. And then they've said uh, 14, not 15. So in essence, what's happened is this, that then this very interesting thing is that they've, they've basically said, uh, we, uh, it's a double knot. It's, it's, it's in essence, uh, these are all the randomized studies. Then what they've done is they've explored the animals bit, 
and then they've taken out uh, humans and then all the human trials are there. So the, all the animal trials are eliminated. Yeah, all this. This is a, a, a very good way of eliminating every single animal trial out there. Yeah. And uh, so this and then this random, but then obviously we combine and we say, yeah, that's fine. You've got all these surgical uh, studies, but I just want the randomized control trial because Cochrane loves randomized control. It doesn't like anything else, okay? Rami, Weehan, Bunayat, Rita, any questions? No? Okay. Weehan, come on, any any uh, uh, bright insights, any additions to what I've said? Uh, no, yeah, I've, I've got what you're trying to say, yeah. Okay, um, Rita, Crystal, Rayan, any questions? Anchika, Dalida, Sumuchku, anything you didn't understand? I have a question. Okay, fine. Adrija, Najwa, Ayuchi, any questions? Harjit, Clement, Daniel? Um, why did you Hallo gesagt auf the Himmel? This, I don't, didn't understand what you're saying. Daniel, Vishwa, Giva. Uh, uh, no questions. Oh, questions. questions. I, I will try to unplug me. That's yeah. fine. Let me go through it all again, yeah, guys? So you understand. COVID Medline. Pick your databases. Embase Medline, yeah? I don't usually search on uh, Cochrane. Uh, Cochrane's got the randomized control trial thingy, uh, but database, I don't search that. I don't waste my time. Uh, I do the minimum. Yeah, nobody will question you after you search two databases. So don't waste your time. Yeah, this is where you put it in. Advanced search is probably the best setting to use because you can link through all these trials uh, searches. You can also do multiple search, but most people that recommend advanced search and then constructing the search. You can do subject headings. You can explode them, which means all the subheadings are included. You can focus them, which means only rehabilitation. The title will be included. But don't use it. This is crap. So don't use it. Keywords. Keywords is MP. If you don't put anything, it will be MP. Every field will be searched. I like MP, so I just leave it alone. I just put in the, the name. I don't even put dot .MP. COVID Medline automatically goes to MP. But if you're doing different searches, uh, but Cochrane doesn't like that, it uses TW. So they use a bit of a filter. I don't use it. I keep life simple. Uh, so TI means just title. So let's say rehab.ti. Talks about this, how we're going to do a search. So Explode rehab, rehab.ti, physiotherapy.ti, one or two or three, then explode the back pain, back pain .ti, five or six, return to work, return to phrases, yeah, or fit to work, eight or nine, and then you combine all three, clickety, four, seven, ten, and then voila, you end up with, where do I go, 211 abstracts, 201 abstracts, yeah, which is great. And then what you can do is the abstracts, you can do current year, past three years, five years. Who can see your screen, please? Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm on the wrong screen. Yeah, yeah, oh, I'm not sharing the right screen. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, sorry, I should have, so <laughs> I have to go through this all again. Here, yeah, guys, so this is, you can embase a medline, uh, just use advanced search. Um, and then, re, for example, subject heading, don't use it, but you can give you explode, which means it gives you everything that's under that subheading. Focus means just the title. Um, so you can use focus and um, uh, explode. I don't use this because it's a relic of the past, guys. Relic of the past. Keyword, MP. If you don't put anything, you'll do MP, which means search separately, which is, I like that. Dot TW means that it just does the title and the abstract which can also be used. I mean, I understand Cochrane's point, why you should use that, but I tend not to use it because I don't care. I, I don't want to complicate things. Um, and then we talked about linking together. So explode, uh, explode rehab, rehab.ti physiotherapy. Then you say, oh, one or two or three. So you just do click, 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 or then uh, back pain, back pain, or you click it together. Return to work, return to work, click it together. And then you say, well, and four and seven and 10 must have all three in the paper. And then if it's all three, that's only 201 abstract. 
Then you change this to 100 per page, then you uh, export. I like to export as an IRS file, but you can explore, uh, export as an um, uh, EndNote, uh, Word, anything you want. Yeah, uh, anything. Um, Word is actually not bad. Uh, if the abstracts are exported to Word, then you know you can use them as well. I personally prefer IRS file. Change this to 100, and you can export 100 abstracts at a time only, not more than that. Limits, English language humans, yeah. And then, so yeah, this was like, so I would also do a citation abstract, citation style is Ovid citation, yeah. So export in this way. So you can do Word if you want. You can save your search if you want. I always, a lot of times I'll take the picture as well, yeah. You can save your search. You can uh, you can uh, basically find your search path and then rerun it a few years later. Truncation was we talked about this. The apostrophe is the best one. The dollar sign sometimes I don't like it. I don't use it. But the apostrophe can give you too much. Therapist, therapist. We talked about this. Floating subheadings can be useful if you are looking for something like side effects. It will be useful. A E. Uh, adverse effects, complications of CO, drug effects, etc. Proximity searching. Proximity searching is adjacent. Now, this I only find this useful in very specific situations where you have like a really long term for some reason. So, middle ear uh, infection. So, adjacent three would mean up to three words within three words. Yeah. And this is a, a search that I wanted. I uh, want to show you. As explode asthma, asthma one or two, uh, mobile phone, and then you can and then you can do and with all. Yeah. But if you see these other stuff, the wild cards, this uh, uh, grid or this question mark or this dollar, they all mean the same thing. But keep it simple, please. So use apostrophes. Yeah. Not. So Cochrane uses. Explode animals, but don't use humans. Yeah, don't use humans. So uh, in essence, then and then what is as one not two. So this is an interesting way. Is a double knot, what we call it, a double knot. And this is a, an interesting way to explode. I actually don't do this. You know, personally, there's a filter here. Why? Why complicate your life? There's a filter for animals here. Human. Click on this. I don't complicate it. I know Cochran loves to complicate things, but I don't complicate it. Why? This is the picky box there. Just use it. Why, why are you making your life hard? But not you have to be careful about because it, explode, it can exclude certain terms that might be useful. Yeah, because it exclude every single paper. Uh, phrase searching we talked about, and that phrase searching can be dangerous. Cognitive behavioral therapy. It's saying usually it's better to search each of these words separately. Yeah, most of the time. And um, for the piece de resistance, I will show you the Cochrane search yet again. So just so you understand this for, for now and all time, mitral valve insufficiency, mitral adjacent, two words up to regurgitation.tw title and in the abstract, one or two. Then any surgical, these are all certificate types operations adjacent two valve or TW, three and four. Then this is the randomized control trial filter. And this is the sort of the human filter, five and 16. So all of these basically with the randomized control trial filter. Yeah, voila, the end. Simple, understood. One last, oh, somebody said full size slide. Oh, sorry, it's too late, but anyway. Um, I should have checked that earlier. Let me see if there's anything else in the chat. Okay. Um, guys, any any last minute questions? Okay, otherwise we'll stop. Uh, uh, let's go through the room again one more time. I'm going to start from the bottom this time. Ali Khalil, Dalida, Anisa, Rania, any questions? Anisa, what, what, what do you think about all of this? I joined a bit late, but uh, it's very good. You understood how to do a search now? Yep. Are you going to use my way or are you going to use the wrong way? I'll use your way. I mean, too <laughs> late now, but next time I'll use your way. <laughs> oh, fine. 
Um, and there are a few tricks I do to reduce the number of abstracts. I've got a hundred tricks to reduce the number of abstracts, but I skip them right now. Rania, Adeyo, Vishwa, any questions? Anything? No, thank you. No question. No, thank you, Doctor. Daniel, Clement, Harjit, Ayochi, any questions? Anything? Uh, no question. Our, 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 we all told me. Okay, fine. No, no question. Well, this will work on Medline, most of this. Najwa, Adrija, Monica. Yes, doctor, everything was good. I mean, Clement, don't worry, I'm happy to do your search for you, but you know, you need to basically tell me exactly what you're looking for. What is your comparison? Otherwise, I can't do the search. It's not possible. You need to give me an exact question. Yeah, so I can do it for you. Okay, okay. okay thank you. I'm still, I'm still working on, on the research question. I'll go back to you. Okay, so much go, uh, and Chika. The problem is that if your research question is not defined, you'll end up with 3,000 abstracts. Each abstract takes about an hour for one person to screen. So that means you end up with 30 hours of work. And that, um, if your uh, meta-analysis is already taking 30 hours just to do the search bit, then don't worry, you're never going to get published because everybody's going to be sick and tired of you and they won't want to work with you. Yeah? Christelle, uh, Rita, Bunayat, we had any questions? All good, doctor. Thank you. Okay. Rami, Najib, George, Kiara, any questions? All no good. questions. Thanks so much. Okay, Celeste, no question. Okay, fine. So uh, let me just check the chat and then otherwise we'll... Oh, so I could not figure out the exact meta-analysis with our book from session four, the one with suicide prevention data set. Now there is a, a, a you, you can download the suicide prevention data set separately. Um, now, if you have any issues, there are three main ways to resolve it. Number one is that you uh, reinstall all the programs from chapter two. Yeah, install all of them, uh, meta, meta four, all of them you need to reinstall. That's one thing. The second thing is make sure they're all loaded up from the library. Yeah, if they're not loaded up from the library, then that's a problem. Sometimes the, the uh, final thing is that they may be that you need a previous version of Meta. So that will, uh, if you uh, install Meta, it will tell you if that issue is there. Sometimes it needs the previous version. Otherwise it should work, okay? All right, I'm going to stop here. I'm gonna send these slides to Niraj and uh, uh, Alang Srinina um, as well. Um, and then uh, they will try and share them. Okay, but I think I'm going to stop here. Alexandrina, anything else you want to say? Uh, no, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ahmed. This is very informative. Hopefully it's very clear now how to do a clear search. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone, I've posted the feedback, feedback form link um, in the chat. So if you could please fill that out, it'd be great. Um, and then we should be back next week with our 10th session. Um, Dr. Uh, Ahmad, do you know what topic you're going to do it on? We have that it's meant to be subgroup analysis, but it's it's. Uh, I think uh, we uh, subgroup analysis. I think we did do meta regression. Um, yeah, yeah, meta regression has been done. Yeah, I think so. Subgroup and uh, it's fine. I'll do some sensitivity and probably some. Oh, okay, okay, brilliant, yeah. brilliant. I think, okay. uh, how many sessions are we doing in total? Um, 11 sessions in total. And how many sessions have we done already? Uh, this is number nine. I want to do network meta-analysis at some point. All right, fine, we'll see. Um, we we uh, can add an extra one on if, if you feel like it would be beneficial. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the problem is that I haven't actually done all the different types of uh, meta-analysis yet. Mm. Um, there are, there are, you know, with the data types, there are seven different types. It's fine. We'll see. Let's yeah, let's yeah. the sensitivity and subgroup, and then um, I might uh, see if there's um, uh, if you want to do uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, uh, learn about network meta analysis as well. I think for some people who had ideas, I think a network meta analysis will work very, very well because it's, it allows you to have multiple comparisons. And it's actually only a, 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 because of the way R works, all you have to do is just use a different function. 
So as, as far as the stats bit is concerned, it's not that more complicated because you're just using a function. So I think if we can teach that, that would be quite useful for a lot of people. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, we can definitely do that next week. But then, yeah, that's fine. We'll, yeah. we'll see how to do it the week after. And then okay. I think, yeah, so I might have need two more sessions because we also need to do some of the other types of meta-analysis. I haven't done about uh, what's called, um, you know, pre, what's called pre-calculated data. Pre-calculated data means the data in the papers doesn't make sense. You have to change it around to make the meta-analysis work. So it's right. a have to cover yeah. it. Okay, right. no problem, no problem. All right. Okay, I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you everyone for attending. We'll see you all next week. Bye.